team call. My name is Jessica Bowser Nelson, and I am super pumped, especially about tonight and that you're here. So I'm going to kick it off pretty quickly. I'm going to go through kind of the announcements and stuff as fast as possible to give our guests plenty of time to share with you. And I want to give you a heads up. So I've got a guest speaker coming on, but I also have a pretty cool announcement for the team at the end. So stay till the end. Uh, you know, we're still going to do our best to stay within the 30 minute time frame. We might go a tiny bit over, but like I said, I've got an announcement, but I want to save it for the end, um, to not take up too much more time. So I first want to just give a shout out to some of our top producers of the week. I'm going to go with our 500 superstars and higher. These are the people that are on the cover photo. We have Jessica Wolf, Mary Beth Toulis, Hope Bosch, Jason Kiefer, and Dana Stein. 600 superstars, Carrie Tinsley. 700 superstars, Cassidy Brewer and Michelle O'Connor. And our top producer of the week was Kathy Wolch Wolcheski. Way to go, Kathy, who was like constantly on the top of that leaderboard. Next up, we have some top sponsors in the house. These are coaches that added three or more coaches to the team in one single week. Super extraordinary. These are coaches you want to keep your eye on because they are inviting and they are doing it right. So Cassidy Brewer, Danita Ozen, Josira Santiago, Morgan Alexis, and Ruth Schroner. Way to go, team. Next up, we have a whole lot of new Emerald coaches. If you are not Emerald yet, you want to make that your first mission as a coach so that you can be open. It's like when you're fully open for business, it's when you start to earn off this amazing team. It's also when you, um, it's one of your big kind of accomplishments in order to be eligible for customer leads. So we have brand new Emerald coaches, Anastasia Sprague, Heather Leroll, Laura Macharski, Lindsey Green, and Jessica Deckard. Then we have a new double Emerald coach in the house. You know him well, Dan Pellucci. And next up, we have three Diamond coaches. And it happens to be these three coaches were Diamond before, and they got their Diamond back, which is super awesome. Uh, Casey Walker, Kathy Walcheski, and Miranda Valade. That deserves the wave, you guys, for all those coaches rocking their business. Yay! All right, we do have a couple announcements. Team shirts, your Dare to Dream team shirt. If you want one for Summit, if you want one for Shareware when you're out and about to get people to ask you um, more about what we do as coaches, or if you just want one because it's literally the most comfortable shirt I own and I won't stop wearing it, um, they are only going to be on sale until Thursday. It is your last chance. I only do these one to two times a year. So if you do not get one now, you will not get one before Summit. Um, so make sure you get your order in. Um, close in the shopping cart on Thursday nights. And then we have to order the shirts. Then we have to print the shirts. Then I will be mailing the shirts. So expect those kind of mid-February is my, my goal. But like I said, make sure you let your coaches know that you get your order in ASAP because um, they will not be available beyond that. Because I, I literally make these to order. I don't buy extras or have stock in my house or anything. So, and um, if you guys have not noticed the cover photo, we came together, we made a team, a Dare to Dream goal for 2017, and that is to have a minimum of 50 Beachbody Challenge winners in 2017. Uh, this, I love this goal. This is a totally achievable goal. We already have two coaches on the team that have already won this year. And that is Mrs. Amber Pardo, who has been deserving of this forever. And um, Janine, who I did not even know, if you have not seen Janine's um, photos, Carl Deichler actually shared them last week. Uh, it's the one that talks about, you know, saying yes and that you have a chance to defy the odds. So definitely um, check out both of their transformations. Their two winners so far, you have the entire year to commit to your program, to rock your results. You don't have to lose 100 pounds to win the Beachbody Challenge. It's about committing to your program and your transformation. And they actually judge a larger percent percentage of it actually on the story. So honestly, if you're on this call, commit to a program from beginning to end, follow the meal plan, incorporate your Shakeology, share your story, and you can easily be one of those 50 winners this year. So that's our goal. Hey, if we double the goal, if we end up doing 100, that's even more awesome, you know what I mean? 
And we also have a team goal of 32 elite coaches. So in the diamond group, in case you guys don't know, we have a secret diamond group and um, that you only get into when you're diamond. <laughs> but we have a, a, a goal in there where we're working towards 32 elite coaches. So that's super exciting stuff too, because that only happens um, the more we all succeed. So I'm super pumped for this year and for what's to come. I'm just checking to make sure our guest speaker is on or not. Uh, so other than that, I think that um, covers all of the announcements. But like I said, um, we have our guest speaker hopping on, but I want to make sure that you guys um, stay on till the end because I do have the special announcement uh, to share with you guys at the end of one more thing that, I've, that we've pulled together, some of the leaders for 2017. So without further ado, I am so excited to announce to you guys our special guest for the evening that is here to share with you. Um, it's a girl. Uh, she not only happens to be super awesome, she happens to have the best hair in Beachbody. Here is Miss Jericho from Court of Force. Are you there, Jericho? I am. Can you guys hear me? Yes, I can see you too. Hey, happy Monday, everyone. Everybody's super pumped. So I don't know if you know, we have, we have 200 people on here, which is right. way more than we've ever had. <laughs> um, but I didn't tell them until just now. So they've been dying to, to see and to know. And I'm sure they're all freaking out. They are in the chat. So amazing. I'm and the floor is yours. Whatever you want to share with us, we're just happy that you took some time to hang out with us. So, wow. Well, thank you for having me. I'm just um, here at my house. My husband's making Beck's dinner right now. We had his uh, one and a half year checkup today. So we're just back from, from Orange County and kind of having an every, every day um, Monday. But it's so great to be on the call. Thank you for having me. And um, yeah, I would love to chat with you guys if you have questions about Court of Force. I can give you a little bit of kind of a breakdown for those of you guys that um, don't know much about me. I can give you a little intro on myself and then tell you a little bit about the program and then answer some questions if that sounds good to you guys. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So um, I'm pretty new to being exclusive Beachbody, but those of you guys that have been with Beachbody for a while would probably remember me from Les Mills Pump, uh, if you guys ever did those programs with Les Mills. And Les Mills is my background. So it's, it's a group fitness company based in Auckland, New Zealand. And I spent um, just about a decade working with them uh, professionally as a trainer, training instructors to teach group fitness, the, their group fitness formats. And um, so that's how I was really introduced to, to the fitness world was teaching group fitness classes and then, uh, you know, working with them. And you may or may not know, like I said, if you guys were with Beachbody five, six years ago, they partnered with Les Mills and they created Les Mills Pump and Les Mills Combat. So uh, I was a part of that process and got out and did some, some workouts on the road, Super Saturdays, and then also a few summits representing Les Mills Pump and Les Mills Combat. And... Um, a couple years later, 2014-ish, uh, they kind of decided to part ways, and so I was pretty disappointed to hear that, but then shortly thereafter, I was offered uh, a full-time role to jump over and become a super trainer, so it was a really awesome opportunity for me, and I'm really excited to be here. So I was um, creating Court of Force probably halfway through. I found out I was pregnant and, and jumped into creating that program and, and really brainstorming it and creating it with Joel. Um, and jumped into teaching it and was still in prod dev right after my son was born. So I was a brand new mom and kind of figuring out how to balance all of that uh, right alongside creating uh, Court of Force. So it was a very exciting and chaotic year, but um, a really fun and adventurous one. And here we are now, the program is, is made and we're creating the live format as we speak. We're gonna launch it this year. So that's kind of our focus right now. And um, I'm really, really happy with what we've designed so far. So, so that's that. And, you know, for those of you guys that aren't really, if you haven't tried the program, if, if you've never done any kind of mixed martial arts style workout, uh, it's really fun. And we break everything down. We have an excellent modifier, breaking down all the moves. Um, we have learn it and work it, which are little intros to all the MMA workouts. So you can you know, learn how to break down all of the, the kicks and the punches and feel more successful. Um, and then it's not just kicking and punching. I think a lot of people think that it's, it's cardio kickboxing, but every other day in the program you're doing resistance training, just using body weight. So 
we do a lot of crazy push-up uh, variations and, and different work just using your body weight, which is really fun. So that's it. And we're seeing a lot of great, um, a lot of great results coming through from people. Uh, and I don't know if you guys are seeing Carl's post over the weekend, but we actually have, uh, we had an infomercial shoot and Mario Lopez is, is doing the program and really loving it. So he's going to be um, hosting our infomercial, which is really exciting. Yeah, so I was curious about that. So did he actually go through the whole program or did y'all just do some workouts with him or how do you Yeah, know? we've been we've been meeting up with him and working out with him now for a, for a while and um because his his background is uh wrestling and also he he's done a lot of uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu and he loves stand-up martial arts. So um yeah, he was really interested in, in doing the program and wanted to meet us to work out with us and and he was really on board. So we thought it was just a natural fit that he worked with us. He's obviously he's such a great host. Who doesn't love AC Slater? Who, who watched Saved by the Bell? Right? <laughs> so, I, yeah. I already put that in the comments. I was like Slater. Yeah. I realized he wrestled in real life. I thought that was just on Saved by the Bell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's he's into it, and he's um he's a dad as well. He's got two kids, and his little boy. I think he's three years old, but he's he's already in um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which is cool. He posts pictures of him and his little guy all the time. So, um, so yeah, yeah, he's, he's great and he did a great job and we're really excited to see um, more of the footage. Awesome. So we are getting some questions already. Do you All know, right. will the live, um, be ready in time to get certified at summit? That's a great question. <laughs> and I'm looking at my hubby. My hubby actually works in the live department. He's, oh. uh, he heads up the education department. So it's really fun. Uh, we work together. I met him working with Les Mills back in 2005. And um, we used to do a lot of presenting together. And now this is really fun that we get to work on Court of Force together. And um, yes, to answer your question, yes, it should be available by Summit. So we're really excited about it. We have so many people out. That's one of the top questions that I get is people, you know, they're interested in, in getting trained and certified to teach Court of Force. So it's being tested as we speak. Um, we're actually, we taught it at a club last week in Santa Monica. We're going to teach again next week at the same chain. And then um, Joel and I have been testing it at Beachbody HQ. We're going to teach another class tomorrow. So yeah, we're getting some good feedback. That is awesome. And then, um, so I have a question. Did you do your own hair? <laughs> <laughs> to answer that, yeah. And actually someone else asked me that as well today because there's so many different braid variations. Um, I got a lot of hair to wrangle, especially for, for the intense workouts we do in the program. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Actually, now that they know that I know how to braid my own hair. It they takes it. like a fraction of the time for me to do my own hair. We found, um, I worked with a couple of really talented hairstylists. Um, but unfortunately I've been on a few shoots with Beachbody where they've had hairstylists and they maybe just weren't used to working with so much hair and they would, or maybe didn't have a lot of braiding experience and they'd kind of get halfway through the braid and their fingers would cramp up and they would give up. And I would end up, you know, finishing it or we would go, go with a different style. Um, but it was a bit of like half of each, you know, I had some of those were not styled by me. Some of them were. So now I've sort of found that it's easier for me to just do my own hair. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. Well, we ran a huge like team wide group. So almost we had about 130 um, going through quarter force together. So, oh, so cool. your hair was a common topic. <laughs> I get questions all the time about the hair ties because I've, I've made several comments at live events and people are like, how do you get all your hair to stay up like that? Especially in the bun when I put it in a bun and it stays, it's, I've told a few different, uh, on, on a few different calls I've mentioned this, but my sister, I have a twin sister with the exact same hair and she introduced me to these really strong, like life proof elastic hair ties that she found on Amazon. And so she ordered them for me and they were super cheap. And you get like, I don't know, 200 in a pack for 12 bucks or something. And they have literally changed my life. And I've never been able to, up until that point, keep my hair intact on top of my head until I found these things. So um, I will post a link. If anyone's interested, I can send you the Amazon link, but they're the bomb. If you yeah, have you long definitely hair, send it to me. I'll post it. <laughs> okay. Um, we did have a question. Do you have any tips on improving balance in the workout? Yeah, absolutely. So balance, I mean, the first thing you have to think about, um, especially in moves that we're doing isolated, uh, you know, standing on one leg, throwing kicks is engaging your core. So make sure you're, you're first of all, tightening through your midsections, keeping a strong core. Uh, and then you can also 
just take your eye gaze somewhere that's not moving um, to focus on something and that will, will really help you. And just to not think about kicking too high, start low, kicking low, tap your toe down in between. Um, if it's a different kind of move, you need to hold on to something. That's totally fine. You could hold on to, you know, a table or a chair, but it just, you know, it's practice. Awesome. Um, okay. Let's see what else. If you could create another fitness program through Beachbody, would you do another MMA style program or something different? I love mixing things up. So I, I mean, of course I would love to do another mixed martial arts style program. Uh, some kind of core force extension would be great. Um, but I also love dance. I love high intensity interval training. Um, I love all types of training. So, so yeah, it would, um, I'm open. <laughs> yeah. And everybody, we're excited to hopefully, you know, have, get your next project soon. So yeah, that would be great. I know they're constantly busy and they're always working on stuff. So, you know, we're, Joel and I are, are, have been a little bit like twiddling our thumbs right now. We're working on live, but we're still kind of like, Hey, what's next? What's next? What, you know, what are we going to do? And everyone's asking about, are you going to make more core to force workouts? And they keep telling us the 2.0s just came out and there's the deluxe workout. So we have to kind of be patient and, and let those land first before we think about shooting some more stuff. But, but we will have a lot of, um, they've already locked in all these dates on our calendar to shoot the first, uh, six rounds of four to force live. So we will be teaching in, um, in the certification workouts. So guys awesome. look forward to those. Yeah. Um, so we got a mom question cause I know, um, I mean, you had just had, um, your little boy, I think when you filmed Court of Force, right? So I, you know what, when I shot half and half those, um, the beach body on demand exclusives, half and half and half and half harder. That was like right after I had him. So, um, he was an unexpected C-section. We had some sort of a really long labor and some complications with him being turned the wrong way. And so ended up with a C-section was not expecting that. And so my, my recovery was a little longer than expected, but I waited the full six weeks before I got cleared. Uh, but I knew that I had to hit the ground running when, uh, you know, because I had quarter force coming up and, you know, at that time they were wanting us to make these, um, exclusive workouts. So I wrote half and half and then half and half harder, which were filmed on the same day. But, um, you know, for me coming out of, coming out of that recovery, that was, that was the hardest and most, um, challenging comeback I've ever had. I've never, I've never thankfully knock on what I've never had an, an injury that's, you know, taken me out. Um, and I work in fitness full time. So I've, I'm, I was always used to feeling fit and, um, you know, I guess sometimes your cardio can kind of come and go a little bit, but I knew for me what, how I felt always dialed in really strong. So throughout my pregnancy, I was teaching a lot of classes and, um, but about, let's see, probably around 30, when I was around 33 weeks, 34 weeks pregnant, I was getting so many, uh, Braxton Hicks contractions of false labor contractions when I was teaching classes. Cause I was teaching a lot of like higher impact stuff and, you know, listening to my body, taking it easy. But my, my fitness level was so high that, you know, I sometimes would maybe push myself or not realize, uh, my body was saying, Hey, chill out a little bit. Cause I was having these contractions. So my doctor just thought, you know, keep it safe, stop teaching and, um, stay active, but just maybe lay off the, the classes. So I came out of teaching around there. And then, like I said, I had the C-section. So for me personally, not being active for that many weeks and then jumping right when I jumped into my first workouts, I, I literally, I cried, you know, <laughs> I did a, um, like a 20 or 30 minute modified hit workout and it killed me. And I seriously thought I was going to throw up and I ended up crying at the end not from the pain, but from the realization that I had a long way to go. And that was the, like I said, the most unfit I'd ever felt <laughs> that I could remember. And, um, so it was, you know, I just kept going and I modified where I needed to. And my fitness came back, you know, fairly quickly to the point where Joel and I joke about it. We'd go to the gym and work out and I would bring, um, you know, my son Bexton in the car seat. He would sleep in the car seat when we go to the beach body, um, third floor gym and Joel would be dying and huffing and puffing and I'd be like smacking him on the shoulder to try and keep up. So at that point, Joel was in a, a space where, um, he was just lifting. That's all he was doing. So my cardio <laughs> was actually better than his going into court of force. Um, but yeah, we got into teaching test groups and, um, uh, gosh, two a day. So that was really helping out, uh, morning and evening, uh, 
just the base calendar that you guys, whoever's doing quarter force, that's what we were teaching two times a day. And um, yeah, and then shot it early, a little early on the early side last year. So yeah. So everybody's wanting to, know, they're wanting to know how you met Joel. How did that, how did, and, um, and is he as funny in person as he seems? Oh man. Joel, Joel is like, um, he's like an annoying brother to me. <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's funny, but that's our relationship. Um, and we met, let's see, we met probably back in 2006, 2006, 2007 on, um, I want to, I want to say it was a Les Mills quarterly in Washington. So Joel used to live in Washington and I became a national trainer presenter for Les Mills in 2005. So every quarter we would go on a circuit and we would travel around to different cities and teach the new Les Mills releases to the certified instructors. So that was their kind of their ongoing education. And then we would lecture and do little workshops. So Joel was an instructor and he taught, um, he taught, taught body combat and body pump. And, um, I was a, a trainer presenter for body combat. So he would show up to the workshops and we'd see him there. And, um, shortly thereafter, he was booked and I was booked on um, a photo shoot with Les Mills. So I met him on a photo shoot again. And um, so just through Les Mills events, kind of maybe a few times a year, I would kind of run into him. And, um, and then in 2011, fast forward, uh, I was living in New York. My hubby and I were living, in, we weren't married yet. We were living in New York, um, working out in Eastern Long Island. And moved back in 2010, 2011, they shot Les Mills Pump. And so Joel and I were cast and part of the, the big team of like 12 trainers on Les Mills Pump. And that's really when Joel and I uh, started working together more because we were the only two trainers in that, uh, in that program that were in Southern California. So we were close to the Beachbody headquarters. Um, you know, we were the easiest to, you know, book on events that were kind of local. And, um, also we were asked to do a lot of super Saturdays. We got to go to the summits and, and, um, and represent the format. So that's kind of where our, um, our working relationship developed. I, I guess you could say it was less Mills pump. So back in 2011, 2012. That's so awesome. then, and then he was working with gold's gym, uh, back in, in, in those days. And yeah, we just bump each, bump, bump into each other all the time. And now, here we are with Court of Force. So cool. Um, so are you going to be in Punta Cana with us? Yes. Yay. <laughs> so you're going to be at both waves then, huh? No, I don't believe we are. Um, I wondered how they were going to work that. And I'm looking at my calendar now. Forgive me. I don't even know if you guys, can you guys still see me? Yeah, we can still see you. So I can tell you, let's see here. Is it May? Um, it's April. Ah, it's Okay. So I will be there from the 26th through the 1st. Oh, I think that's whatever, the, whatever wave that is. Yeah, I think that's the second wave. I'm sure somebody in the con, yeah, it must be because we're all teal and they're all like, no, boo, sad. <laughs> oh, wait, we're, we're till the 27th, Sarah's saying. So maybe we will see you then if you're coming in on the 26th. Yeah, 26th to the 1st. Depending if they like put you straight to work or if they let you like go to your room. <laughs> I know. You know what? Like the last on the cruise we did. Uh, oh, cruise. Ugh. It was a little crazy. Maybe this one will be different. But yeah, but our rooms were amazing. So it was, it was nice to hang out in the room. But yeah. Yeah, I kept seeing all the trainers post from their rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Except yeah, on, on the ship we were all like, we were all on the same side and the same, um, like we, I would lean over my balcony and like wave at autumn and then look over to the other side of the ship and it was like Siggy. <laughs> so we'd all just yell at each other. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> um, let's see. We did have like quite a few questions about, is it possible to get a strong mid section again from a lot of moms that had C sections or have five children in C sections? Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. I get, you know what? And, and, Everyone is different. Every recovery is different. I get a lot of questions about uh, diastasis recti. This program, absolutely, everything that we, we did when we created it, it's, it's core-centric. It's all focused on working from, uh, from a strong core and understanding how to move your core throughout the workouts to, uh, you know, to emphasize the workout there first, um, to draw power from your core and strength from your core while you're building it up. So, uh, yes, absolutely. Um, but in terms of 
the C-section and being a mom and understanding what that is to come back after it. Like I said, every, everyone is different. This is a 30 day program. So I would just encourage you to keep going, keep strengthening yourself, um, keep challenging yourself and you'll absolutely keep improving. Awesome. It's and also then, great for people that have low back issues because so many, and, and a lot of people don't understand why they have lower back pain, but for the most part, it's from having a weak core. So doing this program is so awesome to help people strengthen their core all the way around and help uh, alleviate and prevent lower back pain. Great. So this could be probably a great question for everybody. So it might relate more to how you handle your schedule and motherhood, but just obviously you're juggling a lot of balls, which a lot of people are doing also. So how in the world do you do all of it? <laughs> um, I have to give myself patience, to be honest. Uh, time management is something that I'm still getting better at. My schedule is all over the place. It changes from day to day because we have uh, you know, different things going on at the office, different departments. Um, everything's always changing. So for me, it's just kind of really being tuned in and try to use, trying to use my time, um, you know, efficiently. And I think that was one of my biggest aha moments becoming a parent was realizing just the concept of time and how much the, like a little tiny human can just needs from you all the time. Um, and, uh, how much I value having time to myself. So yeah, it's um, organization and, and patience because there's, there's no such thing as perfect, a perfect day, a uh, perfect schedule. Things get in the way, but you got to roll with it and, um, and just give yourself a little bit of grace <laughs> and have a glass of wine from time to time. Exactly. You already here first, people. <laughs> Mine's over there on the counter right now. Right. It's waiting on you. <laughs> oh, so uh, I, I have a question. What was your like, favorite move of the program and what was the one you dreaded? Oh my gosh. Um, favorite moves. I love, I love, I love kicks. Um, and you're so good at them. Thank you. Uh, people ask like, Oh my gosh, how do you kick like that? Or how do you kick high? And it's honestly, it's flexibility, but it's a whole lot of practice too. I spent so many years working with, um, with Les Mills body combat, which is also a mixed martial arts style program. And then doing some other training to help me with my technique. But um, yeah, I love I love the MMA combinations because they're just so powerful and they make you feel so empowered. So any of those, I love all of those. Um, and then also my the spikes, um, roll jumps. I love grounded fighter stance. I think some of those really wicked push up variations would have to be. I have I have a love hate relationship with all of them, but yeah. Um, but in you know and and I'll tell you what. And MMA power and plyo, especially those are the, there are 12 run workouts. Any time where I'm busting my ass doing a spike and Joel is like, come on everybody. Like, and he's walking around and I feel like, like hitting him in the face because he's not doing the moves with us. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm frustrated. <laughs> I tease him all the time. Um, no, but, but yeah, I don't know. Was that, is that a good answer? Yeah, that was a good answer. I, 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 love, I love them all but I have a love hate with, with probably the pushups the most. And everyone's asking like what your feelings are about Sphinx blasters. <laughs> I'm sure you get asked about that the most. Um, we, we get asked about how to do that move a lot. And then also people are just like, why it's so hard. <laughs> yeah. It's a killer move. And it's, it's such a great move for your triceps. Um, and if you really learn how to do it the right way, it will really transform the strength in your arms. So, um, yeah, I see so many videos doing it the wrong way. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So we've, we have, um, I can't tell you how many breakdowns we've done on Facebook Live. And I think we even did one for um, the Court of Force uh, Instagram page. Maybe we did like a, a blog, a little blog article, including that move. So um, yeah, it's even in like the challenge group posts. Yeah. The thing is, we coach the heck out of it. So if you listen to, and just watch the breakdown when we're teaching it, you get everything you need to know, but people get really stuck. I think with the, here's the thing. I think a lot of people are, are attempting the move before they can even do a single tricep push up on their knees or on their toes. And if you can't do a regular tricep push up properly with really great alignment and, and, uh, and posture, <laughs> then it's not going to happen with the, with a sphinx blaster. So 
Um, so try those first and then just slowly get into the Sphinx blasters. They'll happen. Yeah, that's a great tip. But I know they're evil. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Got to have a little evil in there. Yes. Well, thank you, Jericho. I don't want to take any more of your night because I know you got your family there and the wine. <laughs> so I just to thank you for hanging out with us. I know everybody so enjoyed this and loves the program and can't wait for live. And thank you guys so much. And um, yeah, if you have any more questions too, or if any of you guys are currently doing quarter four, so hopefully you are, um, and you're not already in our, our challenge or we have a support page, Joel and I, it's called Fight For It 2017. On Facebook, we are we're, we've, we're just giving you guys lots of extra tips and motivation. Uh, we go live every week just to go, you know, an randomly answer questions. Um, we're giving away some awesome prizes. So if you guys want to jump into that group, it's still open, and it's um, again, it's called Fight for It 2017 uh, with Joel and I. And then also, if you have any more mom questions and you want to chat about mom stuff, I'm going to do a Facebook live on my page this Wednesday at 12 o'clock. So I'd love to, um, to see you guys and, and chat some more. What is that? That's noon Pacific, I'm guessing. <laughs> sorry, my little guys. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. It's um, 12 p.m. PST, so it'll be 3 o'clock East Coast for you guys. Perfect. All right, well, thank you, Jericho. Everybody stay on, but I'm going to let her go. I'm just going to tell you guys one more thing. But thank you, Jericho. We appreciate cool. you. Thanks, Come guys. Right. Thank you. Have a great week. Bye. All right, bye. All right, you guys, I just had one more thing to share with you. Um, wasn't that awesome? <laughs> that was so fun. Okay, um, so before we go, uh, I worked with some of the leaders on the team because I wanted us to come up with like this new um, thing for Dare to Dream just for us to get behind because I honestly, I saw someone in a completely other industry do this. And so we have an, a 2017 Dare to Dream Creed. So we have put this together. I want you guys to print it off. I want you to put it on your desk or I want you to put it on your refrigerator or your mirror or somewhere where you can see it every day. I'm going to um, probably get it into the files or maybe into the welcome post so that all of our new coaches can see like now that you dare to dream, this is what you feel, this is who you are, this is what we do. Um, because I feel like it's gonna help us develop even more of a team culture and just the confidence in knowing, you know, the opportunity we have in front of us. So I just have to get my computer to work so I can open it and I'm gonna read it to you guys and then I'm gonna post it in Dare to Dream so that we can all easily access it. But it pretty much just encompasses, like I said, who we are, what we stand for, and what we believe in. And I just think it's going to be pretty cool that when you introduce someone to the team, something else I don't know if you guys noticed, but when we're doing the welcome post now, um, a couple of us, so if you have time any day and you're like, oh, let me go welcome some people, what we're doing, we're still welcoming our posts in the, in the main post, but then we're going to, in the comments, welcome the new coaches. Like if three or four people take some time every day, just be like, Hey, so and so, welcome. So you'll see, you can act. You, do you guys know what I mean? Like, there's the welcome post, then there's the coach welcoming them, and then we're gonna comment below every now and then just to help them make even for more welcomed. Because I know that when you start this journey, it can be very overwhelming, and you just joined a group of like six thousand people, so you probably are nervous about your decision, and then there's a chance all of a sudden you feel very small, right? So this is gonna just be an extra step we can take to make them feel very welcomed and important. So, and then, like I said, we're going to have our Dare to Dream Creed. So when you sign someone up, when you introduce them to the team, they can know, now you dare to dream, and this is what we do. So I'm going to read it to you guys. I'm going to post it in the page. But it says, I dare to dream. I lead the way by inspiring and empowering others. I focus first on being better than I was yesterday and getting fit from the inside out so that I then become contagious. I commit to my own physical transformation by being a product of the product, staying consistent, trusting the process, adopting this as a lifestyle and making my own health and fitness a priority. I drink Shakeology daily, not because it's amazing for me, but also because it is vital to my success as a coach. I show up even when I don't feel like it. I only fail if I quit and quitting isn't an option. I turn my excuses into my reasons why. I'm a positive light to others who are looking for something more and I'm committed to the success of others by encouragement and edification. I fight for the possibility that I have more potential to succeed than anyone gives me credit for. 
I do not give up when faced with obstacles or adversity or things not going my way. I press forward, dig deeper, and stay the course. I am trading a life of mediocrity for a mission. I help people achieve their goals to live healthy, fulfilling lives while I do the same. I dare to dream. Bam! <laughs> So that's it, you guys. I hope you love it. Um, I'm going to go. I'll post the link. So it's a Google Doc, so it's a link, so it's going to be easier for people to just go and print off. Uh, but like I said, my challenge, you guys, print it off. Go, um, what do you call it? Laminate it. Uh, make it where it's something you can reference daily. So guess what? When you're having that tough day, when you forget why you're doing this, when you want to quit, when life comes at you, you have this reminder right in front of you of who you are and what you stand for and that you have a team of thousands of people backing you. So that's it. You guys are awesome. What an amazing night. We're never going to go to sleep, so we might as well just go invite somebody or something. But dare to dream, you guys. Bye, everybody.